Well, I've been working on a project here for the last couple of weeks that I'm pretty excited about, and tonight I'm finally to the point where I'm ready to set up a camera and, and show you guys what it is that I've been building. Now, there's a number of these, uh, what people are calling solar generators on the market. They're not really a generator, it's just a battery pack with an inverter and the capability to charge the batteries from a solar panel. I think they call them a generator because they're supposed to take the place of the little suitcase generators. But um, anyway, there, there wasn't anything that was out there that had sufficient battery capacity or inverter capacity or the combination of those two uh, to suit my needs. Now, I need something like this for work. Uh, I fly drones professionally and, and I'm out in the woods uh, where there's no power or anything like that, behind lock gates, everything else. And I was, when I first started doing this years ago, I was using the inverter in my truck. Um, started killing my truck batteries. Uh, you know, uh, batteries in automotive uh, applications are not designed to be deep cycled and that's what I was doing. So I killed a couple batteries. So uh, last year I switched to using a Honda E1000i generator and uh, that worked fine except that I really didn't like having an engine running all the time and then you got the complications with fire season and, and all that kind of stuff and so I was really looking for a, a solution that would allow me to charge all my drone batteries during the day I might charge as many as 40 to 50 batteries and uh, this was really it right here and I purchased almost everything for this project from Amazon uh, the acrylic box right here I sourced this uh, full 4 by 8 sheet of acrylic from a local plastic supplier in Portland uh, batteries I purchased off of eBay used, and these are Valance U-Charge 138 amp hour batteries. And uh, this gives me about 3,500 watt hours of energy storage, which is a lot. The inverter is available on eBay and Amazon. However, it was quite a bit cheaper for me to order it from AliExpress and import it from China. So that's where I bought that. But everything else you see here was purchased off of Amazon. Uh, a couple of parts I have in here were 3D printed for my 3D printer, including the, uh, some parts for the battery tie downs in this case right here, but uh, everything else could be purchased directly off of Amazon. I'll go ahead and per uh, put the links for uh, each of these items down in the video description. If you guys want to build something similar, you'll know all the parts that I used. Now, I didn't set up the camera for this entire project, and there was a few reasons for that. Really, there's nothing that special here. I didn't really design anything new or reinvent the wheel. Uh, you know, basically I just drilled some holes and bolted some stuff into place and bought a few parts and wired some things up. Uh, there's nothing really that complicated here. Uh, another reason is this is the very first time I've ever done any kind of project with acrylic before. The sheet was pretty expensive, it was 300 and some odd dollars for a 4x8 sheet. Um, I do have all the appropriate tools for, for cutting this, so a table saw and a router table and everything else, but uh, I definitely got better at it as I went. Uh, you can really kind of look at my joints and see the first one that I did and compare that to the last one and see a pretty big improvement over that. But it still came out really good. Let me bring you guys in a little closer here and I'll show you what it is that I've built. We'll start with the inverter here. Now this, uh, this isn't just an inverter, this has uh, got several features to it. It's made by MPP Solar and it is an inverter obviously, 2400 watts which is 20 amps at 120 volts. Uh, it's also capable of split phase, so 12240. Uh, I'm not using that feature, but it is it is possible with this inverter. It's also a solar charge controller, so you can hook up a solar array to this to charge the batteries. It's a grid tie inverter, which means you can tie it to your existing utility and, and backfeed your utility and offset some of your power bill. Uh, it's also a charge controller, so you can put 110 volts into the inverter and it will charge the batteries from that input. It's a really neat little uh, little unit, a uh, nice all-in-one, and it had all the features that I needed for this project. Now the batteries were purchased used off of eBay. These are U-Charge Valance. Uh, I don't remember the exact model number, but 138 amp hours at 12 volts. Uh, they're lithium iron phosphate batteries, and uh, to pay just over 300 bucks for each one of these was a real bargain. They were used, so I went ahead and did a full charge and discharge. Uh, the second time I did the discharge on them, I did it at a 0.3C rate, which is a little faster than the testing standard, but uh, the batteries returned about 90% capacity when I did that. So that shows that they've been used some, but they still have a lot of life left in them. All right, here I've got my power outlets. So combined, I can provide a sustained uh, 20 amps total out of these four outlets with a 40 amp surge total. Uh, that'll run pretty much anything that you can plug into one of these 15 amp receptacles. I've got stainless steel spring-loaded handles right here and these uh, are strong enough to be able to handle the weight of this entire contraption. 
Right here is where we plug our power in. So when we plug into this right here, this provides power to the inverter, which then uh, charges the batteries. And I have the batteries, or I have the inverter set up for the proper battery chemistry so it uh, doesn't damage these lithium batteries. And this is my, uh, I call it a control panel. I 3D printed this box. I designed it in AutoCAD and then 3D printed it. It's actually three pieces. So I have a face piece that holds the displays. And then I have a center box and then a back plate. And this allowed me a, a good location to do a bunch of wire connections and stuff like that without having a big snarl of wires out in the open where you can see them. The nice thing is I can take any one of these pieces off right here and access the instruments if I need to. Uh, right here I have my AC in. Uh, you can kind of see on there this shows how many amps are coming in from the outside, what the voltage is, uh, the power, how many kilowatt hours total have come in, the frequency, and uh, obviously this is line, so we expect everything to be basically perfect here. Uh, and power factor. Uh, and then this side right here is the same instrument except it's what's coming out of the inverter. Uh, right now with the power hooked up, it's uh, basically just passing everything through, so we fully expect to see 120 volts and 60 hertz. Now down here I have the individual battery voltages. So these batteries are wired in series. So I got 24 volts going to the inverter, but this right here tells me what each battery's individual voltage is at. Uh, this right here is my DC side monitor and it's blank right now, obviously. Uh, something happened to it earlier today. Uh, it was, uh, the screen was flashing and everything. I don't know, cheap Chinese parts, I guess, or something. So I went ahead and disconnected it. Uh, I'll just order a new one. But it basically displays battery voltage capacity, amps, uh, all that kind of stuff. So over here I have my master disconnect switch and it's rated, I believe, at 500 amps, which is far more than it's ever gonna have actually passing through it. On the bottom I have some polyurethane feet and this keeps the box up off the ground, hopefully limits any scratches or damage to the bottom. And I also have, you really can't see them in here, but I got small weep holes in each corner. And the reason I have that is uh, this is not a weather type box and I do expect to be using it out in the rain occasionally. And any water that does somehow make its way into this box uh, will obviously end up on the bottom here and I want it to drain out rather than turning into water vapor and humidity that could damage the electronics. Now things that I want to add to this, uh, that I am gonna add to this, uh, first and foremost, is gonna be some ventilation. Right now there's no ventilation in here. Uh, in my shop is heated, but it's like 60 degrees out here. And I did run this for an extended period of time at a high load and it barely even got warm in there. So I'm not super concerned about it, but I also know that during the summer, there's gonna be some direct sunlight shining on here and uh, really not having ventilation inside of here is not a good idea. So I'm gonna be adding some ventilation. I've actually already designed and 3D printed this right here. It's like kind of a snorkel shaped box with a, with a electric fan in it. And this is basically gonna go right in here. I'll cut a hole for the fan. And what that'll do is that'll force air in. The reason I have it shaped kind of like a snorkel here is for that rain resistance. Uh, the moisture or any rain droplets that get sucked in there will actually have to travel upward for quite a ways before they come out of the duct and uh, that'll really limit the amount of water that, uh, that could make its way inside there. And then of course I've got a matching duct right here that I printed that uh, will be my, my outlet. Same type of thing, snorkel shape, so it'll limit how much, uh, how much water can possibly get in the case. All right, first of all, we're running on AC power right now. I actually was running this thing for a couple of days and uh, just got done charging the battery. So we're at a full charge right now. This is showing right here just about half an amp and the batteries are up at full voltage. We'll go ahead and unplug this. You can see this meter went out because I no longer have AC going into it. And uh, this meter right here is now displaying what the inverter is supplying to these four outlets. If you look at the meter right here, you can see I don't have anything turned on right now. So we've got zero amps of current, zero power. Still, we've got a good 60 hertz and 120 volts coming out of the inverter. Let's start up this heat gun right here and we'll see what, uh, how this meter changes. About 1.2 kilowatts, but still a nice clean 120 volts, 60 hertz. Just under 10 amps coming out of there and you can see the battery voltage droops down just a little bit when we put a big load on it. I got this on high right now. My meter's showing about uh, 10 amps on the AC side and about 1.2 kilowatts is what it's pulling. 
And we'll start this chop saw here. You see, I had no problem with multiple starting surges with that chop saw. I wanted to point out something about this inverter. A lot of inverters use a modified sine wave and some electronic equipment really doesn't like that. It's basically a square wave that has a couple of steps in it. This inverter though uses a pure sine wave which uh, it uh, uses some wave shaping uh, capacitors and MOSFETs and things like that to shape the wave and actually turn it into a pure sine wave. So we're looking right now at exactly what this inverter is outputting. And I've got the scale set to 50 volts per division so yeah, we can count that up. That's 50, 100, uh, 150, 200. So the RMS value is 0.7 of that, 120 volts, and a perfect 60 hertz across there. And you can see the waveform is really nice. There's no funny spikes or anything like that in there. And I'm gonna turn on my heat gun right here and we'll see how that waveform changes. We saw just a momentary drop in the voltage when the heat gun was kicked on. Well, really, it does a very good job. Let's fire up that uh, chop saw here and see what it looks like. And again, just momentary uh, blips in the in the waveform, but really, it does a good job of compensating for those big changes in load. Hey, now that we've pulled a few watt hours out of these batteries running the saw and heat gun and that kind of stuff, we're going to go ahead and plug in this uh, wall power. You can see my second screen is lit up here. We're going to watch this. We're starting off at just one amp and it's going to initiate the charge cycle on those batteries here in just a second. You're going to see the power and amperage go up. You're also going to see a corresponding rise in battery voltage. And there we go, now we see 5, 8, okay, so 900 watts, that'll stay under the capacity of my Honda U1000i generator. And you can see the battery voltage has jumped up as well, so now this inverter is taking care of a, a good battery charge cycle for these batteries. Well, that's it. This thing is ready to be put to use. I'm excited to take it out and mount it in the bed of my truck and uh, charge my drone batteries off of this instead of that noisy generator. I did want to give a shout out to Will Prowse, a DIY solar with Will Prowse. Um, and the reason is, just in the last couple of months, he's dissected a couple of these Valance batteries and also went over this uh, MPP Solar brand of inverters. And I really appreciate a guy that's willing to buy something like this with his own money and cut it apart with a saw so you could really uh, strip away the shiny case and see what's actually inside. And it was really revealing. These Valance U-Charge batteries are built significantly better than other options that are on the market. So. Will, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. Uh, played heavily into my choice to buy these batteries over the other options that are out there. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.